this case has positive vitreous pressure and will illustrate the risks of doing the continuous curvilinear capsulorexis without a viscoelastic. If the tear, which stopped here, was continued, I could sense that it just may veer off toward the equator. So we pause at this point, add air, and then a viscoelastic. You'll notice we're putting air in before releasing the irrigation fluid with the cystotome so that there isn't a further loss of pressure within the anterior chamber. That neutralizes vitreous pressure because sometimes just after taking the cystotome out, these tears will zip out to the equator. Now we replace the air with a viscoelastic, which will adequately neutralize the vitreous pressure and give enough room to go in with the forceps and grasp the capsule very close to where the tear is at that point. Notice the vector force decidedly away from the tear, actually pulling right toward the wound to redirect the tear more centrally. And once it has changed directions, then the normal vector force is used to complete the curvilinear capsulorexis. So this case illustrates techniques to avoid a peripheral tear if one is aware that it is impending. Now let's talk about what to do if this tear gets away from you and you have not been able to rescue it. So here we have a tear that has gone out to the equator. We still have to we still have to complete the circle. And there are uh, different options on how to complete this circle. We can make a snip here with a vanna scissor and then carry the tear on. We could make a snip here with a vanna scissor and carry the tear again. We could make multiple can opener openings, which is what you're most familiar with and way which you may decide to do at first, but if you want to make it as ideal as possible, try to achieve the continuous tear over the extent except for this one radial extension. And that would be by the two techniques I described there or reverting back to the the old technique I used to use with the continuous tear capsulotomy, that is to make a new puncture here and carry this one this way and this one around this way. That puncture is usually a blunted one. One may also make two punctures, one to go this way and one to go this way. So there are a number of different ways to complete it, but I think the safest one is to use the vanna scissor to make a tangential snip on one side or the other, and I would choose this left-hand side so as not to put any extra tension on this one tear. And then one ends up with a continuous curvilinear capsulorexis with one defect. That one defect has potential for problems in the late postoperative period. And what I recommend is with any defect in the anterior capsule rim, such as this, once the lens is inserted, I would orient the loops perpendicular to that one tear and then match that tear with a cut with a vanna scissor and extension with forcep so that you have matching tears and matching arcs of anterior capsule edge, which do contract after surgery. 
so that there's no unequal force to displace the lens in the post-operative period. This case will illustrate matching an anterior capsule tear. You will note a discontinuity in the edge of the anterior capsule here at about 11 o'clock. With Vanna's scissors, we're going to match that tear in this location. With this matching tear, the segments of intact anterior capsule will be equalized. And when there is contracture postoperatively, the contracture will be symmetrical and any late decentration of the intraocular lens will be avoided.